Well, the Cold War was the reason for doing Apollo. The Soviet Union had launched the first satellite shortly after John Kennedy became president and had launched the first human into space, Yuri Gagarin. Kennedy, a very competitive person, thought that this was not acceptable, that the United States had to compete with the Soviet Union for space leadership. He wrote on uh, April the 20th, 1961, a memo to his advisors asking them to find a space program which promises dramatic results in which we could win. And the race to the moon was on. Well, the point was to beat the Russians to the moon. Kennedy, in a secretly recorded uh, meeting in November of 1962, said the Soviets have made this a test of the system. That's why we're doing it. And everything we do should be uh, uh, aimed at getting on the moon before the Soviet Union. So th there was really no question that it was competition with the Soviet Union that drove the program in its early years. Actually, the idea of planting a flag didn't come until a few months before the actual landing. What we were going to do wasn't clear to symbolize. The idea was to say this is something that the United States had done for all mankind. And so the flag was planted showing it was the United States, but there was a plaque on the lunar lander that said, we came in peace for all mankind. Well, the United States focused its effort and provided the money that was required and the uh, human resources. The NASA budget went up 89% after Kennedy announced the goal, 101% the next year. Uh, NASA went from uh, 15,000 to 35,000 people, 400,000 contractors. So this was a focused, unified effort to achieve the goal. By contrast, the Soviet Union was full of internal rivalries. There was not one leader, not one focus, and they never basically got their act together. I think going to the moon and looking back at the beautiful Earth, the picture of Earth rise over the moon taken by the Apollo 8 mission, and then Armstrong's first steps, which were televised around the world. Uh, millions of people, perhaps a billion people, saw that, created a sense that this was not an American achievement, but an achievement of all humanity. And uh, the, the fact that it was done in competition by then, it kind of disappeared. It was done f as an achievement that proved what humans can do when they put their minds to working together, to cooperating, to seeking a challenging goal. And I think the world recognized that. Well, I think space exploration, let's be literal and talk about exploration, going places to find new things, like going to the moon, is, uh, it started as a response to U.S.-Soviet Cold War competition, but it quickly grew into something of a grand adventure for humanity to go and learn new things, do go new places, see the images of our Earth and its place in the cosmos. So it really became a, a shared uh, adventure. An American historian named Dave, uh, Daniel Borston called it public discovery. Uh, it, the, the communication satellites that allowed the uh, Apollo landing to be broadcast around the world, they were just put in place. So it was almost the first event that was televised uh, on a global basis. Uh, so the world could share in it. Well, I think uh, by defining getting to the moon as a race, 
President Kennedy uh, kind of set the stage for not following up. Once we won the race, there was no reason to keep racing. Uh, he said, land men's on the moon, Americans on the moon, get them safely back to Earth before this decade is out. Well, we did that. And then there was no next reason to keep going. And it was very risky and very expensive. Um, why have we not gone back since 1972? Well, two, at least two presidents have said we should go back. Hasn't happened. The political will that under Pin Kennedy's commitment has not been present. Whether it will be present, whether uh, we're on our way back to the moon now is an important and I think very interesting question. I don't think there is a new space race. I think the US and China are pursuing their space programs for their own reasons. You know, back in, in 1961, Kennedy said, find me something to do in which we could win. It was definitely a race. Uh, these days, I think the reason to go back to the moon is because we want to resume human exploration. We, we, uh, we, when we went to the moon during Apollo, we really didn't explore it very much. We went to six different places and did a, only stayed a day or two. Uh, so there's much more to discover. I think it's going to be done as an international collaborative effort with some competition. China has said it is interested in going to the moon, but not until after 2030. Uh, the U.S. schedule now uh, calls for us to be there well before then. So I don't think there's a, a anything parallel today to the space race of the 60s. Well, the first thing to say is that since we left the moon in December of 1972, we haven't gone anywhere. Uh, going in circles on the space shuttle and then now the International Space Station is not exploration. It's supposed to be routine. It's not supposed to be exciting. So expecting public excitement is a false expectation. Uh, I, I think once we begin once again to travel beyond the immediate vicinity, of uh, Earth, uh, that there will be public excitement. I mean, after all, uh, for the past 40, uh, how, how many years, 47 years, uh, we've only been as far as from Madrid to Barcelona uh, above the Earth. Uh, so once we begin to go again, I think there will be excitement as there was during Apollo.